now what we do is we take up question number 6 from your book question number 6 simply reads as determine accounts receivable turnover ratio if credit period is case 1 1.8 months case 2 45 days and case 3 7 weeks now I have explained you how to make the calculations directly so there is no need to first find the average balance of debtors and then compute accounts receivable turnover ratio that could be a formal but longer way I have explained you the direct way of computing this let us see how to write up the answer for this question over here we would say accounts receivable turnover ratio ARTR in case 1 it will be 12 months divided by credit period in months so it is 12 months divided by 1.8 months and that comes to 6.67 times then case 2 we will take 360 days divided by credit period in days so it is 360 days divided by 45 days that is 8 times guys one thing that I want you to understand over here if you take 365 days that will be also fine but notice one thing you will find that whenever the credit period would be in number of days like uh, 30 days 45 days 90 days 60 days basically a number which is a divisor of 360 in other words if 360 is found to be multiple of that number then we generally tend to assume from our own side that let it be 360 days in the year and why like that throughout financial management one notion you will have to follow that a month is comprising of 30 days a year is comprising of 12 months so that way 12 multiplied by 30 would give you around 360 days in the year so it is okay to assume this in the year that is 360 days in the year however if you are doing that you should better write that assumption in your answers case 3 answer will be 52 weeks divided by 7 weeks that is 7.43 times let us move ahead and now what we do is we take up another question that is question number 7 from your book let us read this question it says determine credit period in days considering 360 days in a year if accounts receivable turnover ratio is case 1 8 times case 2 5 times case 3 4 times now this could be very very simple situation you have to simply convert the information about uh, ARTR into credit period in number of days so numerator will be 360 days and in the denominator you just write the accounts receivable turnover ratio and you get to know the credit period so it is very simple let us see how to write up the answer for the same in your answer you would say determining the credit period through accounts receivable turnover ratio credit period in case 1 will be 360 days divided by 8 times that is 45 days in case 2 it will be 360 days divided by 5 times that is 72 days and in case 3 it will be 360 days divided by 4 times and that comes to 90 days so one important point of understanding over here that we require have you noticed that when you are taking inverse calculations you are getting accounts receivable turnover ratio getting converted into credit period and vice versa so basically just follow this quick calculation tactic in examination and where will you need this to be applied in the highest degree in a question of analyzing credit policy if they do not provide you information about credit period but instead what you get from the examiner is the information about accounts receivable turnover ratio do you know what you are going to do first first you convert that information of accounts receivable turnover ratio into your required information that will be credit period that could be number of days or months whatever and once you do that you can then just solve it as a question of analyzing credit policy in the usual way 
where you make comparative profitability statement of present and proposed situations and you identify where do you get the highest net benefit and accordingly you conclude the scenario. So, I will give you a note on the same and uh, you should write that note and then we will proceed ahead and do the needful. So, please write an important note over here. Accounts receivable turnover ratio is inversely related to credit period. Higher the accounts receivable turnover ratio, lower will be the credit period and vice versa. While handling questions on increase or decrease in credit period, if the question informs ARTR, then first determine credit period through ARTR and then solve the question. Let us go ahead and take up a very important question that is question number 9. Let us read this question. It says XYZ corporation is considering relaxing its present credit policy and in the process of evaluating two proposed policies. Currently the firm has annual credit sales of rupees 50 lakhs and accounts receivable turnover ratio of 4 times a year. The current level of loss due to bad debt is rupees 1 lakh 50 thousand. The firm is required to give a return of 25 percent on investment in the new accounts receivable. The company's variable costs are 70 percent of the selling price. Given the following information which is the better option? So, they have given three alternatives present option 1 and option 2. They have given annual credit sales and accounts receivable turnover ratio and amount of bad debt losses. So, you have to evaluate which of these three is better and for doing that notice one thing that it is accounts receivable turnover ratio that has been informed to you instead of credit period. So, as per the instructions that I have given you, you should first convert the information about accounts receivable turnover ratio into credit period and then solve the question in the usual way. So, let us look into how to present the solution for the same. In your solution as I have instructed you earlier, you first find the credit period at present and that will be 3 months. Credit period of option 1 will be 4 months and credit period of option 2 will be 5 months. So, once you find the credit period then only you shall move ahead while solving the question. We move ahead and now we make the usual comparative profitability statement. Now it is as if your home ground you know what you have to do you identify the three alternatives you mention the credit period and their total sales the total variable cost question has given absolutely no information about fixed cost. So, you have no choice but to assume fixed cost as 0. So, variable cost will be cost of goods sold and then you compute the cost of funds blocked and how to compute this cost of funds blocked I will be showing the detailed working in the next slide and bad debt losses are directly reported to you in the question itself. So, when you compute the net benefit A minus B minus C minus D it is 11 lakh 31,250 for present case option 1 it is 11 lakh 50 thousand and option 2 it is 10 lakh 82 thousand 812. Let us move ahead and write up the working notes for cost of funds blocked at present as well as under the two options given. I do not have to explain you this working this is something that you had been doing all the time. So, basically in the present scenario your cost of goods sold for the entire year is uh, 35 lakhs and the credit period is 3 months. So, 35 lakhs into 3 by 12 this will be your funds blocked and cost of capital for the company or cost of funds for the company is 25 percent. So, 25 percent of the amount of funds blocked will be your cost of funds blocked and similarly you will make calculations for option 1 where credit period is extended to 4 months and here it comes to 3 lakh 50 thousand and similarly for option 2 where credit period is extended to 5 months this comes to 4,92,188. Let us move ahead and write up the conclusion that we have observed. Accepting the proposal as per option 1, the overall profit of the company increases from rupees 11,31,250 to rupees 11,50,000. Therefore, 
the company should relax the credit terms as per option 1. Let us move ahead. Let us begin with question number 12. Let us read this question first. A trader whose current sales are in the region of rupees 6 lakhs per annum and an average collection period of 30 days want to pursue a more liberal policy to improve sale. A study made by a management consultant reveals the following information. They have given credit policy A, B, C, D and with that they have given increase in collection period. Notice one thing, this is not the credit period, this is the increase in collection period. So actually speaking, the credit period at present policy is 30 days. If you adopt credit policy A, it will cause an increase in credit by 10 days. So the credit period under policy A will be 40 days. Credit period under policy B will be 30 plus 20 that is 50 days. Under policy C, it will be 30 plus 30, 60 days and so on. Now these are again increase in sales. The current sales is 6 lakhs. So your sales under each of these policies will be 6 lakhs plus the amount of increase. And these are the percentage default anticipated. That means it is basically bad debt indication in terms of percentage. The selling price per unit is rupees 3. Average cost per unit is rupees 2.25 and variable cost per unit are rupees 2. Now here you need to understand one thing that uh, the current level of average cost per unit is 2.25 where the variable cost per unit is rupees 2. That means the allocation of fixed cost per unit at present it is 0.25 and that 0.25 would indicate nothing but the fixed cost and that fixed cost in terms of total amount should not change in any column and they have asked you to consider 20 percent as your cost of funds and consider 360 days in the year and which of the policies would you recommend for adoption. So let us look into how to present the solution. You will have five columns present and four proposed policies A, B, C and D. You write up the credit period you mention the total sales that is the present sales plus the amount of increase then the total variable cost and the total fixed cost what you get at one column will remain same in all the columns cost of goods sold will be aggregate of variable and fixed cost then you can compute the cost of funds blocked and thereafter the amount of bad debts and when you take A minus B minus C minus D, you will be getting the amount of net benefit. Let us move ahead and now take up the next working that is cost of funds blocked. I do not have to explain you this working at all. You know how to do it. 4,50,000 at present is the cost of goods sold into 30 by 360 into 20%. You get 7,500. And in the same manner, you work out for all other policies that is for A, for B, for C and for D. So quickly take note of all these calculations and then we shall move ahead and write up the conclusion. We find that policy A is the most profitable one. Let us move ahead and write up the conclusion over here. In your conclusion, you may write implementation of credit policy A, B and C will bring additional profit of rupees 3606, rupees 2651 and rupees 1583 respectively. Therefore, implementation of credit policy A will be recommended for maximization of profits.